Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton in from the Flourish Academy. This is our weekly Q&A and the first question comes from Kathy and she asks, would love to know how to use Lightroom Mobile and how to sync with my desktop. And I actually replied to this and I said, this is um, not suitable for live video, but I will possibly put together a screencast on this. Personally, not a fan of Lightroom Mobile, but I could see how it might be necessary for people who, are tr who travel and want to use Lightroom differently than I do. Um, I don't know if I'm an expert enough in this area to talk about it, Kathy, but I will see what I can do. The next question comes from Christine and she says, I have never shot in RAW before. I have Nikon D750. I am feeling a little more confident in Lightroom. So what do I need to know before shooting in RAW? Will Lightroom accept my file size or do I need to change it somehow? This is actually a very timely question because I have a screencast coming out in the next few days showcasing the differences between RAW and JPEG and why you might want to consider changing. Good morning, Stephanie, thank you. And in that video, I intentionally over and underexposed severely a couple of images that I took and I show you how to adjust those in Lightroom. But this is not exactly what you're asking here. So what your first question was, will Lightroom accept my file size? Yes, of course it will. Lightroom will accept files from the D750 unless you have a ridiculously old version of Lightroom. If you are updated, then you should be fine. You will import and work on your photos exactly the same way you do now. Nothing will really change for you except that your file size will be bigger, you will have more data, more dynamic range, more ability to make changes, and ultimately you have to export those files as JPEGs to get them ready for print. It's really the only difference in your workflow, but Lightroom is going to look at those images the same way. Everything that you can do to raw images, you can do to JPEG and vice versa for the most part. It just does it a little bit differently. So it won't alter your workflow, except that you do have to process these photos, meaning they have to get exported as JPEGs because you can't print a raw file. Good morning, Connie and Laura, thank you so much. So hopefully that helps. You do not need to change it was your question. Charlie asks, should you have reviews turned on or off on your Facebook page, pros and cons? You know, it never occurred to me to have those reviews turned off. So I'm not sure what the thought would be behind that unless, and I'm not speaking to you specifically, Charlie, but if I was not great with customer service or if I was concerned about how people perceived me. Yeah, I, I guess I would leave reviews off, but if you are going to strive to be exceptional in your field and provide amazing customer service, then turn on those reviews because they're all going to be awesome. Now, if you happen to get a review that is less than optimal, then actually we've talked about that in a previous video. There are things that you can do, but I'm not sure that I see the pros and cons to this. I think you should just prove yourself to be an amazing customer service advocate, a fantastic photographer, do the best you can for everyone, and by and large, those reviews will be good. So I'm, I'm not sure why you would wanna turn those off. Maybe you could, maybe you have um, something you could share, like a situation or something that you have seen that would help me understand that a little bit better. Michelle asks, where is the best place to market in order to find and book destination weddings, Europe, for example. And this was a great question, but to be honest, I'm not the best person to ask about this because this is not my area of expertise. I have done destination weddings and I loathed traveling with my gear. Some people love it. They have it down to a science, which is, by the way, what you would have to do in order to travel with all of that equipment. I was a neurotic mess when I had my gear on an airplane. I just did not like it. It was a lot of work and it just wouldn't work out for me in my current lifestyle. But I happen to know that Michelle is young and single and this might fit perfectly into her lifestyle. So I would recommend looking up some of the travel photographers, the destination wedding photographers, um, the best in the world, look them up and see what they do. 
Uh, she says, I took it all on vacation. You're insane. I, <laughs> I cannot deal with worrying about my equipment like that. Um, before I jumped on this video, I did look up a few things for you, and I'm going to post a link to an article I read. that um, It's on ShotKit that I thought was really interesting. He said, how to book your first destination wedding in 10 days. And he had a really interesting approach to it, one that included a landing page and Facebook ads, which by the way, I 100% believe would work. So if you wanted to do one and you wanna get more, then that might be a strategy that you take because in order to get destination weddings, you have to be a destination wedding photographer, which it's kind of a catch 22, a double bind as they would say, because you wanna have weddings to show so that you can get them. I'm also wondering if people, brides in particular, still use travel agents if they're maybe planning a destination wedding. Maybe you could make friends with a travel agent, I'm not sure. Or would look online for services that offer that. But I'll post some links below to some articles it might help you out. I'm so sorry. I just don't have that area of expertise. And the truth is, I don't want to because I don't want to do it. <laughs> I think when I travel with my gear from this point forward, it's going to be my Fuji gear, which will be much less and more lightweight, compact, and I think that will work out. Okay, if you have any, that's all the questions I had officially, but if you have any others, you can post them quickly. You're welcome, Michelle, thank you. I will scroll through here and see if there was anything else that was asked recently that I could, oh, my friend Gina says she's ready to redo her website. Does anyone have any recommendations? So I work with a lot of photographers on their websites. A lot of people are using Pro Photo 6. I'm very familiar with it. It is awesome. It works very, very well. Also, you can buy other themes for WordPress. Like I use the Divi theme on the Flourish Academy, but I use Pro Photo on Weddings by Heather. Both of those are really great options because they have a ton of themes that you can choose from to help get you started. So I would begin by looking around at themes to see if something suits your current style and your branding, and then just kind of work it back from there. So hopefully that helps. Oh, and Kimmy asked, best places or sites to get photo books made? So I'm a big fan of White House Custom Color, whcc.com, or Miller's Lab. I love them both. Those are professional labs. If you do not have an account with a professional lab, then you can use something like Mpix or Mpix Pro or even Tiny Prince or maybe Shutterfly. I mean, obviously you get what you pay for in terms of the quality. So if you want a nicer looking press printed book, then you would want to use one of the nicer labs. But I think Mpix Pro does a pretty good job at this. So I would definitely look into that. Um, and a couple of people said Miller's for sure. I use Miller's for a lot of those. And also someone said Nations Lab, which I have heard good things about. Carol asks, ring light, ice light, pros, cons, and preferences. And I've used both of these, Carol. I own a ring light. I do not own an ice light, but I have worked with it several times in teaching situations. And my personal preference is the ring light. I like the quality of light. I, I, you know, I have it mounted on a stand. I can move it. Yes, you can mount a ring light. That's fine. They have various versions of the ring light at different price points. I, I like it. I think personally, I feel that I have a little more control and power with the ring light than I do the ice light. And by the way, that is not scientific or proven. That's just a feeling I have. I. I, I like it better. I felt like with the ice light, you know, it's a strip. And I felt like I had a hard time getting the look I was going for. However, I will say it does depend on your approach to lighting. If you are looking for dramatic lighting, that is highlights to shadows, then a ring light, or I'm sorry, an ice light would be more appropriate. If you're looking for more even lighting, depending on what type of portrait you're taking, then I would recommend the ring light. So maybe if you get a chance, you could play with both. We've had camera clubs where we've had both of these lights and we have experimented with them. And um, I think really it depends on what you're shooting and it becomes a personal preference. So hopefully that helps. Hey, do you have any more questions? It was a pretty short Q&A today, but let me know if there's anything I can do to help you, and I'll see you in the next video.